So let's talk about your general view of what government ought to do. So what, what makes you a liberal in sort of not the classical liberal sense where we, where we agree, but the part where we disagree? What do you think government ought to do? Well, it should be as small as possible, right? I don't believe in massive government, sprawling government agencies with lots of people doing jobs you're not quite sure what they're doing, soaking up public expenditure. I think government should be responsible. It should take action, even if it's against the popular will of the people. You're made to be a government because people expect you to take difficult decisions and to govern. And the example I would use is someone like Margaret Thatcher in, in Britain. I would compare her to the other female prime minister, we had Theresa May. Margaret Thatcher was prepared to make difficult, tough decisions. She was a conservative, but Theresa May wasn't. She just wanted to please everybody. I don't believe in people pleasing governments. I believe you are elected by the people. You should live up as far as possible to the manifesto that you ran on. And I think Trump, to his credit, has basically delivered on most of the things he said he would deliver on. And he certainly tried to. You couldn't argue that he's been elected and done a completely different thing. Um, so I think that, that you know, that's a central part of government is to do whatever the administration has been elected has decided it wants to do. That's why they got elected. You know, doing what the people have elected you to do is important in democracy. So I believe in that. I don't believe in a nanny state, except to the point where the public can sometimes be stupid, too stupid for its own good. You know, do I think that government should occasionally interfere in the well-being of the people? Yes, I do, actually. Um, so where do you draw the lines around that? What's the limiting principle when it comes to, because people are very often quite stupid, as it turns out. Yeah. And, and, you know, that, and if you're on the right, you think that's the left. And if you're on the left, you think that's the right. But the truth is that in personal habits, people make lots of mistakes, mm. make lots of bad decisions. Where do you draw the line around where is the government's role in bettering people's lives? Because well, I think this is a fundamental distinction between liberal and conservative. Take Please. cigarette smoking, right? Most smokers knew it was bad for them, right? They know it's bad, cigarette smoking. But they want the right to smoke, right? It's not a constitutional right, but they want to have the right to smoke. It's my life. Fine, okay, it's your life. But actually what has happened in countries like Britain and America in the last 20 years is you don't now go into a bar and be full of smoke if you don't want it to be. That to me seemed to be sensible government. You know, yes, you are impinging on the right of a civilian to lead the life they want to lead, which is to walk into a bar and have a cigarette at the bar. But actually, if most people in that bar don't want to have a cigarette, why should they be subjected to unhealthy smoke from you in the way that they were being? Now, is that nanny state by government to ban smoking from public places? I would think it was the right thing to do. I'm a non-smoker, though. I smoke the odd cigar. Uh, but most smokers I know actually shrug their shoulders and kind of accepted it. And there's a kind of template there, I would argue, Mr. Shapiro, for the gun debate, which we haven't had yet, but I'm sure we're coming to, which is at what point does the safety and the health of a lot of people get dictated to by a group of other people? At what point do you bring them together? At what point do you try and reach a consensus where the smokers can still smoke or they can still have a gun, but actually what they can't do is go into a bar and shoot it up. And how do you stop them doing it? It's a fundamental question for the public health of the country. And treating guns like a public health issue would be a really smart move for America right now. It might take the politics out of it, which has become so vicious and polarizing. In Glasgow and Scotland, they had a huge problem with knife crime. A lot of knife murders, young kids, mainly white kids stabbing each other. So they treat it like a public health debate and they've massively reduced knife crime in Scotland, which has been great. So, you know, nanny state to a point, I believe in people's fundamental freedoms, but the cigarette debate to me was an interesting one. You know, drink driving was an interesting debate in America, wasn't it? You go about 50 years, you could, you could get in your car and have a few drinks and drive around. And then mothers against drink driving, mad I think they were called, mm -hmm. rose up after a particularly heinous drink driving uh, incident and they affected real change. And now you can't do that. Um, now, there will be people who still think, I want to have a few beers and have a drive. Okay, but you can't, actually, because you might kill people. And they have as much right to not be killed as you do to get in your car with a few drinks. It's fascinating to go a little bit beneath the surface on this debate because I think that the, the debate here is really about externalities, meaning that the reason that we have laws about not smoking in public places, and there you'd have to distinguish for me, even between public parks, which are run mm -hmm. by the government, 
and public establishments, which are run by private business right. owners. So in my view, the government actually shouldn't be involved in that. If a private business owner wants to have a successful business, they will stop people from smoking in their business in most cases because they're going to lose business because most people don't smoke. Mm. And it's annoying to have people smoke there. But, but take the drunk driving example. It's a better example. So the drunk driving, obviously, there are, there are obvious externalities to people weaving all over the road. And the way that you actually police drunk driving is by pulling somebody over who is weaving all over the road and driving recklessly. Mm. So you could theoretically have a crime defined as reckless driving without the actual drink being a part of it, per se, because, you know, you, you, if you drink in your right, home... But fundamentally, sense. and again, this comes back to the guns debate for me, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Fundamentally, you want to stop people getting in their car drunk. That's really what you want.